Hi friends. In some of the pictures that you've seen on Facebook and in this particular video, you've seen a trend in a change in my attire. The dude with shades, no, that's not different. I've begun wearing a collar. And this collar is actually something I'd like to explain to my friends in Oregon who've seen me as a, a little less than conservative. Um, First, just a brief history on the collar. This collar is actually worn by Presbyterians and, and uh, people of denominations that aren't Catholic, more reformed uh, denominations from the, about the 1800s. The first guy to really be known for wearing a collar was a, a reverend by the name of Donald McLeod, and he was a, a Scottish Presbyterian minister. This, this collar for me, it's the reason that anybody really wears one, it's a symbol of being a slave to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As Paul has says, I'm a, I'm a slave, I'm a bondservant to the Lord. For me, waking up and putting on a uniform, like many of you guys who are firemen and policemen, uh, sometimes putting on a uniform gives us a sense of urgency, of identity, but not only us in our hearts, it gives the community a sense of identity. Here is a man who is going to be out about the business of being about Christ. In this particular area in Lancaster and the Antelope Valley, uh, there are enough guys walking around saying, I'm a pastor, and I'm that cool pastor that wears the Hawaiian shirt and the shorts. Uh, it's not, the point is not to be different or to stand out in a way that brings attention to me necessarily, but to truly be about the business of Christ and to rock the collar in such a way as to say, look, just because I wear this doesn't mean that I am, I am any different in my need and desperation for the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This simply means that I am always going to be about his business when I'm out in the public. And the public needs to see that. The public needs to see men, good men, who are about God and who are sincere about their faith in God, not the next cool pastor who just simply wants to be hip and, and do all the right things. You know, I'm, I've gotten older. I've matured a lot. Um, I'm 45 now, believe it or not. Um, and so while I still appreciate my youthfulness and, and the youthful exuberance I have for life, there are some things that demonstrate some maturity for me. And one of them certainly is the, the ability for people to identify me as a man of God and to see beyond the collar and to watch my life and to watch who I, who I, be, who I act with, who I hang out with, how I treat my wife, how am I treating people in public. Am I worthy of wearing such a thing? Now, whether I am in my heart or not is going to be for God to answer, but certainly one of the things that is important for me is to behave in such a way where I do look like I'm worthy. Uh, and, and God's worthy, frankly. God is worthy of knowing that he has some slaves, some bond servants, some men and some women who are absolutely sold out for his mission. I am. And that's one of the reasons you've sent me and Lisa out here to Lancaster is because we're, we're about his mission. I just want to give you a little background on that, let you know why, why the change. Uh, it's a lot of it has to do with the sociological study that I've done out here, how people perceive clergy, how people perceive the church, uh, what's important to them. The fact that we don't have a building, it's actually caused a lot of people to pause and say, do I really want to have fellowship? Is that really a church? People are very familiar with the church, with the kind of church identity here as a building. Um, so that's a little bit for you. I miss you guys. Love you guys. Thank you for your time.